Hi, my name is uh, Daniel, and for my nonfiction book talk, I chose The Wall Growing Up Behind the Iron Curtain by Peter Sis. This uh, is a great nonfiction book because it has a lot of images, maps, and illustrations, and it is easy to read and engages the students. So this is the cover of the book. Um, shows Peter Sis as a baby. Shows a lot of maps um, of, of Eastern Europe and the rest of the world. Shows a timelines and a lot of illustrations in color. Um, so the book, um, author Peter Schiss actually shows us the world that he grew up in Czechoslovakia during the Cold War. Czechoslovakia was uh, left occupied by Russians after the Germans withdrew from the land and after World War II. So this book uh, shows you how, how people of Eastern Europe lived behind the Iron Curtain, which left the people trapped and feeling, um, you know, trapped and wanting to be free. So the story starts in uh, 1948 when the Soviets first took control of Czechoslovakia and closed its borders. So the Soviets enforced the laws on its checks and put in a place the People's Militia to enforce those laws. The government took its orders from Moscow and Russia. So the Russian language, uh, political indoctrination, collecting metal scrap and public display of loyalty all became compulsory. So people also, um, also kept their political views um, to themselves in fear of being turned in by uh, turned in by somebody. Um, so any uprisings were then crushed, and people wanted uh, freedom, so they started defecting to the West. Um, so to, to prevent uh, from citizens from doing that, the Soviets then created the Berlin Wall. The Cold War then escalated, and the nuclear war was just barely averted when the Soviets uh, placed missiles in Cuba aimed at the United States. So uh, Soviets. Um, Forced the propaganda upon uh, the citizens of the Soviet Union, uh, you know, glorifying their union. So the government censored Western flags, art, radio, books, film, and culture. Although oppressed and censored from the outside world, Western culture always seemed uh, to cross through the um, Iron Curtain, and people all um, slowly started to question the lives that they lived. Uh, under the Soviet rule. So in January uh, 1968, the new head of uh, communist government. Um, was appointed into power um, and with good intention censorship was uh, uh, soon lifted but soon after that in august 1968 Czechoslovakia was invaded by the soviets and the new progressive czech republic was sent, um, the new progressive czech government was sent to moscow for re-education the progressives were then removed and then uh, the iron curtain soon came down again taking away all western culture and sense of freedom um, along with it. So dissidents were then forced to do menial jobs and anybody who dared to speak out uh, was then monitored, harassed, imprisoned, deported, or tortured. So then in the mid-1980s, uh, Gorbachev was uh, was appointed and then he recognized the need for the Soviet Union to open up and restructure itself. Um, and so his ideas then spread out through Eastern Europe and then led to the freedom of Czechoslovakia and other nations. And then um, the, all of the rest of Eastern Europe, and then eventually to the collapse of the Iron Curtain in uh, November 9th, 1989. Uh, so this book would be, uh, this book is an outstanding Robert Cyper Medal Award winner. It would be great to teach in a classroom as a brief introduction to history. The, uh, the book provides an interesting information about the past and the struggles of people living under Soviet rule. The book is set up like a timeline, so it tells the story of the author growing up in that time, while also providing facts along with it. The book uh, makes uh, makes time and history fascinating by telling the story from the uh, point of view of the author as a child growing up. So it takes a reader, uh, makes a reader think of how things would be for them if they were in the place of a child growing up in that era. Um, it's a great way to integrate social studies in um, English. Uh, students could write reflections of how different their lives are here now in present day United States compared to the mid 1970s uh, Soviet Union. So it's a um, it's a really good book to incorporate uh, social studies and English. Um, so th a lot of activities actually work with um, with this book. Um, one of them being the possible sentences as a before activity before reading the book. Uh, possible sentences is a pre reading act. Um, Vocabulary strategy that, that activates students' uh, prior knowledge about, about content, area, vocabulary, and concepts. Uh, so before reading, students are provided a short list of vocabulary words from their reading. Uh, students then create based on their prediction of what the reading will be about uh, and then the meaningful sentence uh, for each vocabulary word or concept. After reading the book, then uh, students are then to go back and check to see if their uh, possible sentences are accurate or need revising if they are inaccurate. So this is just a little dra um, a template of the possible sentences, vocabulary words, and they can choose the words and then create sentences with those words, thinking of how they will be used in the book.
uh, for a during activity, um, a word map um, could be used. A word map is a visual organizer that promotes vocabulary development using the graphic organizer. Students uh, then think about terms and concepts from the book in several ways. Most word map organizers engage students in developing definitions, antonyms, antonyms, and a picture for a given vocabulary word or concept. And enhancing students' vocabulary is important to developing their reading comprehension. So this is a little template of uh, what a uh, vocabulary word map requires. It requires a uh, a box defining the other word in your own words, synonyms, using the using the word in the meaningful uh, sentence, or drawing the picture of what could, could relate to that um, vocabulary word. So for the during activity, um, a nonfiction pyramid could be used. Uh, since it incorporates many details from the kind of life that people lived in Czechoslovakia during uh, Soviet rule, so students um, could be given a nonfiction pyramid. Uh, nonfiction pyramids are useful for students to reflect on key or main ideas after reading a work of nonfiction. Nonfiction concepts are then implied by the non um, fiction pyramid, the main idea supporting details and author's purpose. Uh, so it looks like a little pyramid. Here's a template. Uh, the first one is a word describing the major idea, describing the supporting details, another is supporting um, major idea, another supporting detail, the author's purpose, um, important vocabulary words, Dis um, some seven wor uh, some words describing important uh, readers' aids, and then eight words that you learned uh, throughout the throughout the work of literature. So that's uh, the book, um, The Wall by Peter Sis.